If you look closely at a curved spline or shape object, you may notice that it's actually not perfectly curved. It's composed out of many straight line segments. And if I select that object and go into the Modify panel and select by Vertex Subobject and move that around, we can really see that it's composed out of these straight line segments. And this is kind of a holdover from the very early days of Max, from way back in the 90s when computers were really slow and we needed to optimize the display of curves. The Bezier spline is actually a mathematically perfect curve, but it's being kind of optimized or decimated in order to preserve performance. And that's fine, except that when you use a spline curve to build an actual three-dimensional object, the spline quality settings may influence the end result. And so you need to be able to control the decimation or optimization here. And that's accomplished through a rollout called interpolation. Open that up. Interpolation is the filling in of unknown values between known values. In the context of this curve, we know where these points are. And all of the points along this curve are interpolated from the positions of these points in the tangent handles. To increase the quality of a spline curve, we can increase the number of interpolation steps. So regardless of whether something's selected or not, we can increase or decrease the number of steps. So if I bring that up to, for example, 18, I start to get a pretty good spline curve. If I bring it all the way down to a value of 1, then we get one sub-step or one sort of virtual point in between the actual control points. And if we bring it down to 0, it's the same as if we had corner points everywhere on the object. The default is six sub-steps or six interpolation points. There's also an adaptive mode. If you turn that on, it's going to adaptively control the interpolation for each segment. But you can't control what that's going to do. And it'll be easier to see exactly what's going on here if we just temporarily make the spline renderable. We can open up this rendering rollout here, and near the top of that rollout, turn on Enable in Renderer and Enable in Viewport, and increase the thickness. So I want a nice thick curve there. So this is a three-dimensional object now, and actually if I go into a shaded mode with F3, we can see that it actually is renderable. All right, I'll go back to a wireframe view with F3 again. So back to our interpolation settings. Scroll back down there. If adaptive is on, then Max is going to insert a whole bunch of segments wherever it thinks it needs to in order to maintain a nice smooth curvature. But again, you have no control over what's going to happen in adaptive mode. So I don't tend to use that. If I turn adaptive mode off and then increase the number of steps, then I can really see what's going on and I can really get a good sense of the quality I'm going to achieve. Additionally, there's a switch here labeled Optimize. And when that's on, any straight line segments between two corner points will be so-called optimized. We'll only get one segment there. We won't get any sub-segments. But if Optimize is turned off, then we'll get the number of steps or sub-segments as we defined in the steps parameter. And that's the basics of using the interpolation rollout to control the quality of a spline.